welcome you all to this webinar. It is eighth of the series, which is co-hosted by Community Health Community of Practice and Asia Pacific Observatory on Health System and Policy. I'm Samita Bhattacharya, and I'm leading this uh, initiative of the Community of Practice, and I'm based in India. So as most of you know, being a member of this Community of Practice, it is just over a year that this community was launched, which is supported by UNICEF and USAID. Now we are a very strong collaborative platform with 400 plus experts, primarily from Global South. And the key objective of this platform is for better cross-country sharing, learning, and problem solving among practitioners, program managers, and academia. So those who are yet to join this network, but he is part of this webinar, we will really urge you to do so. So more the voice, it's much better. The Asia Specific Observatory on Health System and Policies is a collaborative partnership that promotes evidence-informed health policy regionally and in all countries in the Asia Specific region. It was launched in 2011 and APO is currently hosted by the World Health Organization's Regional Office for Southeast Asia. APO brings together interested government, international agencies, foundations, and researchers with the aim of bridging the gap between scientific analysis and health system decision making. We are very happy that we could collaborate for this very topical theme of how community health workers can be engaged in the management and prevention of non-communicable disease with findings from four countries in Asia, which includes China, Bangladesh, Nepal, and Vietnam. This topic is particularly relevant as most of us visualize CHWs as an agent for only reproductive, maternal, and child health services. But as countries are economically transiting, so the disease burden is also shifting. And as part of primary health care, there is an urgent call for integrating NCDs into CHW's portfolio. So we feel this webinar is very timely to hear example of strategies, practices, and approach from the four countries, which are at different health system level. We are very happy to have three eminent speakers. Uh, we have Dr. Abu Saleh Abdullah, who is a research professor at the Global Institute and professor of global health at Hunshan University in China. Professor Abdullah is a behavioral scientist and public health physician with expertise in epidemiological studies, behavioral intervention, and health cycles and system research. And his current research interests include prevention and control of chronic NCDs in LMIC. We have Dr. Lal Rawal, who is a senior lecturer and also an adjunct fellow at Western Sydney University in Australia. Dr. Rawal's teaching and research interests include NCD prevention and control in LMIC, and also includes implementation science research, health policy, and system strengthening, migration, and health. Finally, we also have Dr. Sohel Reza Chaudhary, who is a professor of epidemiology at National Heart Foundation Hospital and Research Institute based in Bangladesh. Dr. Chaudhary's area of expertise includes cardiovascular disease epidemiology and tobacco control. So uh, it will be roughly around 45 minutes presentation, followed by question and answer. And we will really urge uh, uh, what Valerie mentioned at the beginning. There is a small hand icon you can see where you can press it, and we, uh, and we will give the floor to you to ask questions. But at the same time, there is a chat, chat box there. So as, uh, as speakers will be presenting, you, if, if you want to raise a question for a particular uh, a speaker, please type it in the chat box, and we will take all the questions at the end of the presentation. So with that note, I will request Dr. Abdullah to start the presentation. Dr. Abdullah, it's to you. 
Thank you, Sanjita, for the introduction. And I uh, want good afternoon and good evening, everybody who is on the line. And uh, this is my uh, great pleasure to be uh, uh, on this webinar today. And um, I don't want to uh, talk much about this uh, background. I think Sanjita has uh, described this very clearly, how timely and how important the topic that we are going to talk today. So with that brief note, I think I'm uh, going to uh, I'll go with this talk that engaging community health workers in the management and prevention of non-communicable diseases in Asia, strategies, practices, and approaches. And, um, uh, and I have all my uh, colleague with me. So I'll be start the talking first with, uh, with some background information. And uh, then uh, I'll, uh, my colleague, Dr. Rao, will be moving to uh, uh, talking, joining me to talk some of the result part, and then uh, Dr. Sohel Raja Choudhury will be joining me at the end to uh, uh, discuss the uh, uh, summary of our uh, 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 study. So uh, again, uh, we are all are uh, happy to be here, and I want to emphasize at the beginning of our talk is that the, what we are going to talk today is based on a study we completed in, in four countries uh, in the Asia Pacific region. We call this study as a combating non-communicable diseases in Asia by engaging community health workers in the management and prevention efforts, strategies, approaches, and practice. In B, we call that quote study. So the findings of this study is, is, is already published by the APO in a policy brief. You can see the left side. There is um, uh, the publications. It's published uh, in early uh, 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 of this year. Is the use of community health workers to manage and prevent non-communicable diseases. So the talk we are going to uh, present here today is heavily dependent on the policy brief that uh, many of you might have already got a copy of this or downloaded from the APU website. And uh, so it's mostly, mostly based on, on the findings we have uh, uh, written on that policy brief based on our coach study in Bangladesh, China, Nepal, and Vietnam. So to give everybody a brief background of, of course, uh, uh, we know the NCD has become a, a, a global public health uh, concern uh, in the uh, during the last decade, and uh, is is becoming more and more a, a health a concern for many countries uh, in the world, especially in the LMICs. As NF, I, NCDs is uh, accounted for about seven. 53% of the total of 56 million uh, global deaths in 2017, and of those, uh, cardiovascular diseases, cancers, chronic respiratory diseases, and diabetes was uh, the major four NCDs that are causing all these deaths. And we also have, uh, uh, there's also evidence from the Global Burden of Diseases study that, that there have been a percentage changes in major NCDs there. You can see there have been an increase of 87% of diabetes-related deaths, 24% of cardiovascular diseases, and 38% of the cancer-related deaths. And of the total NCDs uh, uh, in the world, about 77% is total 76.8% of all those NCDs actually occurring in low and middle income countries. Uh, and many of the, uh, uh, these four countries all uh, uh, fall in these uh, LMICs, uh, including many other uh, uh, countries uh, in the Asia Pacific region. So this is a major problem, not from all, for only these four countries, but for many LMICs uh, uh, in in the world. And um, so in this slide, uh, we uh, talk about uh, this uh, uh, burden of NCDs uh, in, the, uh, in the four countries. Um, the data suggests that the proportion of mortality due to major NCD conditions has increased substantially in all four countries between 1990 to 2017. The proportion of disability-adjusted life years due to NCD has also increased, as you can see at the bottom uh, uh, line, uh, uh, um, uh, daily uh, due to NCD has also increased on all these countries between 1990 
2017. Just to give an example, you can see all NCDs in Bangladesh have been uh, was uh, covering 31.4% of deaths in 1990. Now that moved to 72.2%. In Vietnam, it was 62.4%, and uh, and and now in 2017, it was 79%. So NCDs has uh, has become a major uh, uh, cause of death in these countries and many other countries. <clears throat> and in this slide, you can see that uh, uh, that non-communicable diseases also has how is getting a global priority. How and uh, United Nations, how WHO, and how how the APO now is helping also pushing agenda for NCD control. In this slide, you can see that the then UN Secretary General uh, Ban Ki Moon. In his uh, report to the 2011 uh, UN General Assembly, uh, highlighted the growing global threats from NCDs and acknowledged the importance of NCD control and also suggested for good actions that countries should take to mitigate the burden due to NCDs. Since then, uh, UN also has su supported relevant programs across the nations, and including uh, um, uh, WHO is also um, taking some initiatives. And NCDs included in the also 2030 agenda for sustainable development and goal. You can see that I think everybody are very uh, um, concerned about the STG uh, uh, achievement. And goal three is good health and well-being. And under this uh, uh, STG agenda, there have been a number of uh, uh, sub goals was related to NCDs. For example, uh, uh, STG 3.4 was mentioned by saying. By 2030, with the reduced by one third premature mortality from non communicable diseases through prevention and treatment and promotion of mental health and well being. So that is a one. Other one is mentioned 3.6 STD agenda by 2020, that's actually next year, half the number of global deaths and injuries from uh, the road traffic accident. And also, what's mentioned is that. Uh, 3.A to strengthen the implementation of the WHO framework convention and tobacco uh, control uh, 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 on all countries as appropriate. So this is getting a, a more upper level, United Nations level priority, and to reach the achieve the STD goal, I think NCD related uh, uh, activity, NCD related prevention and control, and uh, reducing the mortality and morbidity related to NCD is becoming a, a priority globally and also nationally. And uh, so if this is the uh, global health or being a third. And with that one, uh, how the WHO is following that uh, mandate? The you can see that the, uh, the two leaders from the two uh, UN organizations were united to fight against NCDs and uh, WHO or has taken some several initiatives. You can see from the circles that uh, is beginning on the top left-hand side, you can see who program for NCD is started to support countries with policy advice. The WHO Global Action Plan for NCDs that also started to support countries with latest knowledge and evidence-based information uh, dissemination. WHO Global Monitoring Framework also started to support countries to set national targets, taking into account that uh, nine global uh, uh, targets and also other outcome indicators and progress indicators. To support that, they also started a WHO global coordination mechanism to support countries to facilitate collaboration between governments and other partners. UN also started UN task force for NCDs with the aim to support countries to mobilize sectors beyond, beyond health. So all these activities were mandated or initiated by the WHO uh, to support the countries to set national targets develop national action plans and monitor results with the aim to uh, combat the NCD related burdens at the country level. So um, then in this slide, we can see that uh, um, how um, NCD's uh, um, um, prevention and control efforts in LMICs is happening with the low and middle income countries. We can see that many countries in the Asia Pacific region have healthcare systems that are designed to deal with maternal and child health and communicable diseases. 
However, uh, in recent years, uh, some countries have taken a variety of initiatives to address the gro this growing burden of NCDs, including formulation of NCD multi-sectoral action plans, development of national NCD guidelines, and action plans for the prevention and control of tobacco, harmful use of alcohol use, or, and other health uh, promotion activities. However, many of the low and middle income countries um, in this region have also started phase-wise implementation of the World WHO package of essential non chronic disease interventions for primary health care to, to, uh, uh, to support within the uh, given healthcare systems. However, uh, I think different countries have different uh, strategies, some using in a, in a pilot basis, some using that PAN program at a, a different level or in combination of other programs they uh, already have in place. However, one thing uh, we have identified, the innovations within these countries was that to include engaging community health workers for NCD management and, and how that uh, uh, could be support their primary health care system and have been examined. And engaging community health workers for NCD prevention and control have been going on for, uh, uh, not for NCD, but overall use of community health workers for health promotion activities uh, have been uh, in use for many years. But for NCD, it has become a new issue. And globally, community health workers uh, were working for mostly communicable diseases, HIV prevention and care, reproductive health, child health and immunization, and delivering different primary health care services. However, as, uh, in, in recently, of course, there are a lot of uh, uh, community health workers, a lot of programs across the countries started engaging community health workers for NCD prevention and control. A recent systematic review by JIT ETL showed the potential of engaging community health workers for primary prevention and, and NCD inspectors in LMICs. In that study, is con they reviewed studies conducted number of LMIC countries covering different aspects, smoking cessation, hypertension management, uh, also uh, diabetes or HbA1c diabetes control, or uh, uh, healthy uh, uh, physical activity, and different programs that are supportive of NCD management, and they look those outcomes and they found that actually making contribution uh, uh, those programs that are engaging community health workers. Besides, those uh, that is review, there are also other evidence uh, uh, from other studies. For example, nurse practitioner uh, or community health worker led intervention uh, reduced cardiovascular head or health disparities in a study led by Alan ETL. Community health worker led community based intervention improved blood pressure in low income developing country setting as a study uh, uh, Jaffa or ETL conducted in, in Pakistan and Bangladesh. Community health workers led intervention for household smokers reduced secondary smoke exposure among children in China is led by Abdullah and others. Also, another study conducted by MASH ETL also found that diabetes group education led by community health workers improved behavioral and health outcomes in underserved communities in South Africa. So, and uh, other study also showed that task shifting intervention for common mental disorders in India improved mental health and health outcomes. So, this gives us some background on how or, or, uh, community health workers are contributing in varieties of NCDs, from uh, uh, NCD inspectors, smoking, tobacco, to mental health, to the disease specific and the hypertension, diabetes. So, they are already making some evidence that community-based, community health worker-led intervention could be successful or could make a, a, a better uh, outcome to uh, control or manage these uh, uh, NCDs. So in this slide, with this background, now I come to the study, the original course study that we have conducted in these four countries. So the aim of our, the objectives of our study is to um, examine the, the full range of um, uh, um, uh, programs for uh, uh, NCD care provided um, by community health workers in the Asia Pacific countries. 
and also to review the implementation process of these community health worker-led programs operated in four selected Asian countries. Our aim is that by doing this, kind of this study, our aim is to identify facilitating factors and barriers uh, for engaging community health workers in the delivery of LCD-related services within the primary health care system in these countries now have and, and how they could be actually integrated or they be, could become a, a part or become a recognized members of this primary health care system. Uh, uh, so that was what uh, we explored through this study. And um, next. I am going to briefly mention that the methods we used for this study in these four countries, we used multi-pronged strategy for data collection, including situation analysis through the literature review. That included overall Medline, PubMed, and also gray literature report in those country level, and also consultation with relevant organizations or personnel working in this field. We had stakeholders meeting in the country level policy discussions. We had six country level uh, discussions uh, among different stakeholders in this country. We also hold two multi-country meetings uh, to uh, uh, get different policymakers, academicians, and community health workers together to understand the issues that could be uh, uh, addressed. We also conducted in-depth interviews of community health workers, health managers, and policymakers, and uh, uh, to address to identify uh, the issues that uh, we want to uh, address. And we also conducted focus group discussions uh, uh, to collect country-level data to identify the common issues, common themes that could be considered by the policymakers. And so, as a uh, so, with that methodology, we have uh, uh, come to a conclusion. Our what our findings, what our results, and uh, and so we have found that community health workers is a term have been used by differently by different countries. That uh, so Bangladesh they have different names. They have Sastashibika, Kormi, and community health provi uh, healthcare provider, family health care assistant, health assistant, health inspector, assistant health inspector. While in China, is simple community health worker or village doctor, who are in the rural settings. In Nepal, they use um, um, health assistant, community medical assistant, auxiliary health worker, female community health volunteers. In Vietnam, mostly they call village health workers. However, the role of community health workers within the primary health care system specifically for the NCD prevention and control is not defined. It depends that in all those different names they are using, sometimes some of them have been engaged differently, some have been was just doing it extended work, but overall the role is not very specified within this primary healthcare setting. Uh, and we have also found that they are also receiving different kind of education or training across these countries. In Bangladesh, for CHCP, they get about 12 weeks of training. And also, while health inspector, they get about three years of training, and then they get, can provide that kind of services. In China, is a very specific way or well-developed program. They have a three years of junior college plus one year of practice-based training in the community center, and then they need to have also kind of continuous education program time to time to maintain their uh, status. In Nepal, is uh, uh, overall those 12 months to three years, those who are health assistants and others, but mostly the rural setting, they have plenty of female community health volunteers. They are they have received few days training to few weeks, depending on the programs they will be working. In Vietnam, usually they have a six weeks training program, but also they have received training program specific from time to time and the need of that program, they will be providing services. So with this background information and with this initial uh, background of community health workers, the, our next move is to describe how, what we have found in this study and based on our in-depth interviews, based on our stakeholders meeting and all those efforts we use, how we summarize our findings and we summarize our findings in different uh, things and then I am now Passing my uh, uh, my uh, um, next part of the presentation to my colleague Dr. Uh, Lal Raul, so he'll take over from now to describe the main, the result section that we have summarized under five major themes. Raul, please. Professor Abdullah, Professor Abdullah, thank you very much. Um, 
so the the results that we obtained from the from the from the qualitative studies um, so study the study identified different aspects of the uh, community health workers uh, potential of using the community health workers for the NCT prevention and control and the findings are summarized under the five major themes it includes general health related programs delivered by the community health workers community health workers current role and delivering the non communal disease related services the third theme includes perceived barriers to expand the role of community health workers in the delivery of ncd related services across these four countries and the fourth theme includes perceived facilitators to expand the role of the community health workers in the delivery of ncd related services and care and then the final theme includes the willingness of the community health workers to engage in the delivery of the non communal disease related services across these four study countries next slide please abdullah yeah um the first theme about the general health related programs um so the, the, the following are the um the following are the four uh, uh, i mean the common common um programs being implemented by the by being delivered by the community health workers in these four countries and that this includes basic health record documentation health education for maternal and child health care integrated management of childhood and illness reproductive health and family planning services being provided by the own community health workers recording reporting and treatment of infectious diseases for example tuberculosis hiv and also the programs include the expanded program of immunization these all are provide, being delivered by the community health workers across the four countries nutritional education and micronutrient supplements health education and counseling services as well as treatment of minor ailments fostered and injuries however however only for china only for china the emergency services is being provided in china in china by the community health workers team to include in to include the ancillary related services being provided by the community health workers in these four countries four countries um this includes the uh, basic health recordings and documentation which are being implemented by the community health workers across these all four countries usually they are done in general in general health services for ncds are now being included the second one includes the screening for common ncds especially the hypertension and diabetes screening services are being implemented or being delivered by the community health workers across these four countries however in the case of bangladesh and nepal this includes especially where the programs are being where the specific programs are being implemented for example in nepal now the uh, package for essential non communicable disease prevention and control being implemented being piloted in some districts so only those districts those screening services are going on the other includes the diagnosis and basic management of common ncds especially the hypertension and diabetes these services are also being implemented across these four countries however again they are similar as the previous one in bangladesh and nepal it depends on the where the programs and where the pain package are being implemented the other one includes the improving medication adherence programs uh, this programs is being implemented primarily in china and vietnam and again depending on the programs being implemented especially for vietnam and health education and counseling services especially promotion of physical activity tobacco control this uh, these programs also are being implemented by the community health workers across these all four countries the salt intake reduction the education for the salt intake reduction are being is being implemented by the being delivered by the community health workers in china and vietnam primarily mental health screening so those community health workers who are providing or delivering the ncd related services in vietnam are also doing the mental health screening services 
and then the final link is the documentation of the NCT related services. Whatever services the community health workers are implementing, so they are also documenting those services and also reporting to the health management and information system. The third theme includes the perceived common barriers. So we also collected the information from the community health workers as well as policymakers in terms of what are the perceived barriers they think about potential for engaging the community health workers for the NCD prevention and care services. And, and we have categorized those uh, perceived barriers into the three different levels, personal levels, organizational level, and the policy or system level. So at the personal level, the health workers identified that no specific job description on NCDs. So despite they are providing the NCD related services, however, there are some issues in terms of not providing the, not having the specific job description on NCDs. And the second one is the limited training and education. So this is also the perceived barriers on uh, implementation or delivery of NCD related services and that was being identified across the four countries. Lack of motivation, respect and recognition. Despite the, uh, despite the, uh, the, the current uh, the possibility for using the community health workers for NCD is increasing, however, they also perceive that there are also some aspects of lack of motivation, respect and recognition. And uh, at the organizational level, imbalance, workload and incentives also was identified as one of the uh, perceived barriers. So that was identified in Bangladesh, Nepal, and Vietnam. However, the, the community health workers in, in, in China uh, did, not, did not think that that was, the, that was a perceived barrier. And no integration within the healthcare system also was identified across these three countries, especially Bangladesh, Nepal, and Vietnam. And lack of basic resources and medical toolkit. So even though they are providing the NCD services, however, there were inadequate basic resources and medical toolkit for uh, providing the NCD services that was identified in Bangladesh, China, Nepal, and Vietnam. And no specific provision of payment to community health workers. Uh, no such uh, specific, pro specific provision for payment for uh, community health workers, especially while they are providing the NCD services, was also considered as one of the barriers. No direct referral mechanism. Uh, for, for Bangladesh and Nepal, uh, there has been some kind of programs for NCDs are going on, especially in Nepal, the pain package intervention, and Bangladesh, the program-wise NCD-related NCD intervention as well. So that's why there are some, those districts where those NCD programs are going on, uh, there are some uh, referral mechanisms is being being developed, being practiced. However, other countries, uh, uh, it is being identified that still there's no specific mechanism for the referral uh, referral, uh, referral of patients. No authority to refill the prescribed medication was identified. One of the barriers in all countries, uh, all country, all across these countries. At the policy and the system level. Perceived barriers were identified as policy priority, NCD guidelines, and standard operating procedure. So that was also identified as one of the barriers, and the other barriers was identified as inadequate program associated resources and funding for NCD care, and also the community health workers not yet being part of the primary health care system was also identified. However, an NCD related services are going on but it still there's a scope of developing the NCD related team at the primary healthcare, healthcare level. Next slide, please. So uh, having these uh, perceived barriers and the services identified, also the community health workers and the, and the policy level, policy uh, makers identified some of the perceived facilitators in terms of potential for engaging the community health workers or NCD services delivery across these four countries. Those include, at the personal level, experience and learning capability. So community health workers are quite experienced and also they have learning capacity and learning interest uh, if the program is being 
uh, are being introduced for the NCD services delivery across these all four countries. And interest and attitude, they are, they are quite interested and have positive uh, attitude in terms of uh, being involved in the NCD services delivery. And welfare and benefits also was identified as the perceived facilitators if there is a provision of the welfare and benefits too. Close relationship with community. And also this, this one also identified as one of the uh, one of the perceived facilitators because the community health workers have a very close relationship with the community people and, and it is going to be quite uh, uh, I mean easier for them to work with them and also implement the entry related services. Societal recognition and respect. So if they are given the uh, given the opportunity to deliver the NCD services, that also uh, societal recognition that also will um, uh, I mean identify as a or maybe facilitate to societal recognition and respect, and that will identify across these four countries: Bangladesh, China, Nepal, and Vietnam. At the organizational level, so also the the facilitator person facilitator where the training opportunity. If there are some training opportunities that will facilitate them for implementing the ancient related services. That was identified across these all four countries and balanced workload and provision of incentives. That is also another perceived facilitators if there is a balanced workload, provision and incentives. And in addition to that, community health works also identified that there needs to be the official recognition and as well as supervision and the support from the systems level. And resources for medical kids and resources for providing the NCD services needs to be provided or needs to be adequate so that they could provide the NCD services. And that was also identified as one of the perceived facilitators. Supportive working environment that was identified across the all four countries. So at the policy and system level, some of the perceived facilitators were identified as government has given Government across these all four countries have given the priority in terms of integrating the community health workers for NCD care within the primary health care system. And China has already started. China has already 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 started at the policy, at the systems, and, and as well as the implementation level for uh, providing or delivering the NCD services by, by community health workers. And uh, all three countries also identified as uh, one of the facilitators for uh, incorporating or engaging community health workers at the system level, at the policy level. And the another also facilitator was identified as bundling the select NCDs with model health program. So, so all these countries have some level of experience in terms of engaging the community health workers for providing the services. So there is an opportunity to bundle the NCD services within the ongoing health programs as well. And then allocation of adequate funding. So funding is always very important. Unless there is, a, there is adequate funding, it's going to be quite challenging to implement the, any services. So that was also identified as one of the facilities. The theme five includes the willingness to engage in NCD care. So open uh, community health workers identified that upon receiving the training, especially focused on the NCDs, they are quite willing, they are quite interested to engage in providing the NCD services, including routing screening, uh, early detection for hypertension, diabetes, and mental health services as well. So overall NCD services, however, uh, more focus on the and hypertension, diabetes, and mental health. So NCD risk reduction counseling for high risk and general population, not only providing the services at the clinic level, at the health facility level, also they are quite interested in going to the community and providing the uh, health and counseling services uh, for the NCD risk reduction at the population level, at the community level. And also they are uh, also also, the, 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 the willingness was to provide the referral services to the different health facilities. So at the policy level, the policymakers suggested that it is quite feasible to train and engage the community health workers in the primary care for NCDs. So given the policy passes, given the programs, given the systems, so there is feasibility, there is quite, uh, quite possible to train and engage the community health workers in primary care for 
MCD prevention and control. So there is also the potential for integrating the community health workers in the primary healthcare systems with multitask. So especially not only just simply providing the MCD services, however, those uh, community health workers who are providing the services that also could be integrated the MCD related services. Also, this, there could be testing a standalone model of NCD specific community health workers. So if, I mean, there's also a possibility to test the, just standalone, the, the independent, the NCD related model, whether that model will work or not, or whether that model will show the efficacy or effectiveness or not in terms of providing NCD services. That is also the possibility. And also testing of NCD training model to build capacity for community health workers. Also, the policymakers acknowledge that inadequate incentives available for community health workers. Despite having this policy level, system level, and all emphasis and then the, then the, uh, uh, the priorities, they, they also acknowledge that there is still the inadequate incentives available for CSWs and also the another uh, willingness was identified as fixed financial resources within the annual budget. So every country has the annual budget, provision of annual budget. So there is a possibility and the government could identify and, and allocate the fixed annual budget uh, for the central level and district level, especially for the NCD services uh, delivery in the country. Uh, so here, I would like to conclude my, my, uh, my, my uh, my presentation, and then I would like now to invite the professor, so, Professor Swell Raja Choudhury, to present the rest of the part. Okay, hello everyone, and thank you, Dr. Al, and also Dr. Abdullah for presenting the background and also the findings of our study. So, with and by analyzing all our findings and uh, the uh, and the reports. Uh, we have actually come, come up with uh, several policy options for countries to consider. And uh, these are that the countries need to consider the country specific contextual factors for the development and implementation of NCD programs. And countries also need to prioritize the building capacity of community health workers with a focus on NCD prevention and management within the existing primary health care system that they have what they have at this moment. And continue need to recognize the central role of community health workers within the primary health care program through the provision of incentives, welfare, and career path. And most of the countries in, uh, the community health workers actually mention about the uh, inadequate incentives and also the lack of the career path. And, and this is one of the important things that came up from our findings. And countries should consider adaptation and or strengthening of WHO pain for prevention and control of NCDs. And a stepwise or phase wise implementation of WHO pain would be uh, a good way of uh, integrating NCD in primary health care systems. So, in summary, we'd like to say that there is a potential for engaging community health workers in delivering community based NCD services in Asia. But then you need to strengthen community health workers' capacity to deliver the services. And also, there is a need to restructure and enhance their primary health care system to include in, in cities. Next slide, please. Okay, well, I, I'd also like to end by acknowledging our partners, uh, like the Global Health Institute from Duke University, Professor Shen Lang Tan. We had also worked with uh, Hanoi University of Public Health, with Dr. Huang Van Lien and his friend Chit Han, and on the country team. We worked with Heart International of Nepal, Dr. Sisin Boral and his country team. Fudan University of School of Public Health, China, Dr. Lijian and Tausha. We also work here in Bangladesh National Heart Foundation Hospital and Research Institute of, that is Dr. Sam, with Dr. Samin Zubair and his team. We also issue research support. Uh, from research support staff from uh, Global Health Research Center of the Asian University. And also, I'd like to thank the, the Hudson, that is for the participants in the stakeholders' meetings, participants in the stakeholders' meetings, interviews, and focus groups. Thank you.